sitting here waiting to show you guys how I or calculate some of the stuff and figure some stuff. So uh, this is the range diagram for the Sedano 180. Um, I did a dry run on where we're going to be putting our piece in. So I know my radius is 117 feet. They had a little question of whether or not I'd have enough tip height or hook height to be able to set the next piece on top of it. And I should be able to as long as they shorten their rigging up a little bit. But the way we do this, you can see there's a picture of the crane. And hopefully you guys are getting all this using the old Benchmade pointing tool. Down across the bottom is the radius in feet from center of rotation, which would be right here. And I guess the numbers in parentheses, which you guys probably can't read, those are meters, but this is feet across here. And then this is our boom lengths that we can use. And if you look on this one, hopefully it's focusing. This is our tip height. And then just below it is our hook height. So there's an arced line that follows your tip height and your hook height. Okay, so I'm gonna try not to get ahead of everybody. And then from here up, this is jib. It's like when I did that big cell phone tower, we had all this jib on. The, and I was boomed up about that tight, almost. So anyway, get back to where we were. We know our radius is 117 feet. So we come over here to 117, and if you go straight up this line, which is incredibly hard to follow, because they're so small, until we intersect with our hook height line for uh, that boom length. So that's about right here. It's gonna be at about a 50 degree boom angle. And then we follow this line horizontally to this side, and this is height in feet. And we should have a hook height of 159 feet at 117 foot radius. Now, this doesn't take into consideration boom deflection, which is the bend in the boom. So realistically, we're probably gonna be at about 53 degrees but the boom's going to have an arch to it. And once we get to that 117 feet, we'll probably still end up with roughly the same hook height. So hopefully that doesn't confuse anybody. Uh, if it does, I'll go over it in more detail in a different video. Now, going back here, this is the load chart that I'm using. You can see we've got 110,000 pounds of counterweight. Actually, 110,230 pounds. Our outriggers are fully extended, so our outrigger base is 27.23 feet. And in order to get the hook height that we needed, I've got all 196.8 feet out. So if we scroll down this page and look at our radius, so here's 118 feet, there's 111 feet. You have to go to the one that's got the lesser of the two capacities since we're right between it. So, the same thing on this side, 118 feet, 111 feet. So at 118 feet, with this configuration, this crane is good for a gross load, which is rigging, weight of the piece we're lifting, all of it combined, of 18,100 pounds. It says on here at 118 feet, I'll have a 56 degree boom angle. So what that tells me is I'm going to have about six degrees of deflection in the boom based off the range diagram to this number. Now the radius I'm at right now, I'm at 135 feet. So I'm right between 137 and 131. Since there's no 135 right here, we have to use the one with the next lower capacity. So I will be good for about 14,600 pounds to pick this piece up. And if and I'll scroll up to the computer screen in a second. It actually figures it on the fly. But this is this is how we determine what boom mode we're going to use, what counterweight configuration, and whatnot. So you can see up here there's several different 143 foot boom lengths and three of them. But if you look down here, say at like 52 foot radius. They all have different capacities. 
and what that is is uh, is determined by this is the telescope sections. So section one, two, three, four, five. Which arrangement it puts those sections in determines your capacity. So you actually have a, like a heavy lift boom mode, which gives you a 54,900 pound capacity at 52 feet. That's put in sections one and two at 93 percent, three, four, and five at 46 percent, and then we'll use the same radius. This mode gives us a capacity of 42, 3, and 1, 2, and 3 are 46, and 4 and 5 are at 93. Now, the, what makes the difference on these is as you get out further, the different boom modes give it more capacity because it's less boom heavy. So it's putting, putting the uh, lighter sections out further than the heavier sections to reach out further and be able to handle more weight. But when you're up close, it uses the heavier sections uh, to give it more capacity at a shorter radius. And down here is our allowed wind speed, 33 feet per second. And then this is the number that we actually look for in the computer for our boom modes. So hopefully that doesn't confuse everybody. If it does, uh, let me know. I'll try to think of a different way to explain it.